it felt like it popped, and as soon as it popped, I was pain in my knee. So, oh, like, like this doesn't feel like it's good. Good morning, and welcome back to my channel, guys. I'm gonna get rid of this because I don't want to kill you all. But anyway, guys, welcome back to another video. <laughs> We're about to do some client calls and he's telling oh, hey. the sausages to shut. Stop making noise. Healthy sausages, some muscle food. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> But anyway guys, I think what I am going to try and do in today's video is I've been getting some random pains in my hand, in my fingers. I believe it. I can feel it in my fingers. fingers. I'm feeling my nose. If I start feeling it in my toes, I'm getting very worried. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get some physio on myself. The actual physio getting some physio for a change. But yeah, we're just having some breakfast. We've got some client calls coming up. Ellie Obsession program down below. Same as plug, might as well. Get what he said, what he said. Three days later. Um, basically, after I said I was going to be getting a physio on my finger and hand, it released off some tension in my neck and it really made me feel sick. So it can happen with nerve pressure. When you get that released off, and you can get headache and nausea. But I'm going to show you something really quite special recently. So every morning I tend to have a coffee and I have a protein shake. But now I have found a way of combining them both and I thought I'd show you what I have been doing. You get a little bit of coffee that I put in the cup, just mix it together basically. You don't want anything special. It's just like a shot of espresso then in the shaker muscle food shaker discount code down below you go about 200 mils of milk this is the important bit really you need a protein flavor which is going to work quite well with coffee so recently i've got this chocolate caramel one i've been using an actual coffee protein which worked quite nicely i'm just gonna bang my protein my coffee and my creatine all in the shaker the milk because you've got so much milk in it that it pulls down the quaff the coffee <laughs> I'm making coffee. The coffee quite quick. Bang the lid on and give it a shake. But basically guys, this is a good way of like, especially if you're on the go and you want to get some protein in and get like a decent breakfast substitute in, then you've got the options basically. Go like Tom Cruise. I'll show you it's a great little coffee. You want coffee? It always tastes banging. Pass you back to the future, Adam, yeah? So guys, basically what we're going to be doing today is going over two different forms of injury and how I think most injuries fall under these two categories. Keyword there is most, not all injuries. There is some that are completely different to this, but most injuries I find and I see in clinic as a physio do fall under these two categories. And it just so happens that over this last week, I have experienced both type of these injuries myself. The two types are mechanism of injury. So if you follow me on Instagram, you know that the other, I'm sure, but the idea of that is that it was a mechanism of injury. I did that doing an exercise in the gym and the other form is a gradual onset so if you did followed me on Instagram and you'd have found out last week that my shoulder has been giving me a lot of gip I've been getting numbness in my trigger finger and my thumb and basically that is a gradual onset injury so that's something stiffening up around my body caused by muscular imbalance but the idea of the video really is just to give you guys a little bit of clarity about what different injuries are and what you might have to do to treat them we're gonna go into the gym we're gonna be talking through how to train with injuries and stuff just to make sure that you can keep getting stimulated to the rest of the muscles around it because a lot of the time resting is not the right thing to do we'll have a little bit of a sit down and we'll talk through that first type of injury right guys so i am going to be doing a little bit of a voice over here basically i'm sure what adam is saying is super super informative and super super impressive as it always is but the music in the gym was way too loud and i don't want to get the video copyrighted so i'm going to be doing a little bit of a voice over here so i'm sure oh look at that brilliant bum shot going on the stairmaster using the cardio equipment such as the stairmaster or like the watt bike is great for getting blood flow to your muscles blood is what you need to help flush out any cell damage so especially around my hamstring injury this is something I really do want to be focusing on and this incredible spread eagle like exercise is a perfect dynamic stretch to open up your chest and your shoulders this can be a cheeky warm-up to start off your chest or your push sessions with just to make sure your shoulders and your chest is all warm and what I'm yabbering on about here is the fact that people warm up their rotator cuffs in stupid stupid ways so see this little movement I'm doing on the screen now it's wrong imagine you doing 
doing that with a 15 kilo dumbbell like that there, you are doing an isometric bicep curl. If you want to isolate your rotator cuff in the movement, you want to put your hand on a bench, use gravity as your best friend and get used to getting that movement going and feeling the movement in the back of your shoulder. So get that done and we're going to go straight into a workout montage. Let's go! <laughs> I'm jumping back in, taking over the voiceover, and here Adam is making an absolutely killer point about the lateral raise and training with the injury and adapting the exercise. So basically, it's when I get up to about 90 degrees where I am getting the shoulder pain. So I have adapted the reps slightly, so I am not going quite as high on this side, so I'm not getting the shoulder pain, still getting the stimulus in the muscles, still helping them grow, but just avoiding that pain levels while I can treat and do my rehab doing the other exercises. And now we're going on to the final two exercises, which is going to be a superset, and these are going to be rehab based exercises. So we have the good old face pulls, pulling them shoulders back, hitting them rear delts, and then we're going to go straight into a scap set in motion. So targeting them rhomboids, lats, and even a little bit of lower traps in there as well. And basically, these exercises are to get my shoulders sitting in better position. So you guys can try these and incorporate them into your routine. And you're going to absolutely smash it, aren't you? I'm going to leave you for the end of this workout. I promise I'm not going to come back again. But you know what? Me and Luke went and got a sauna and we absolutely loved it. We chilled out, relaxed and got our recovery on. feel so good after the sauna and everything there sauna steam room pool jacuzzi add it all how it helps is that my muscles get nice and warm when they're warm they're more pliable especially in my hamstring it needed a nice little bit of a stretch so that was perfect for it but what i am going to do next is something that i really really want to talk to you guys about is obviously being a physio i feel like i can self-diagnose and i can talk a lot about my hamstring and what it's been like and what it might be and whatnot i can't test it and i can't assess it properly and it's one thing that i want you guys to take away from this is seeing a professional sometimes is the correct thing to do so i'm going to go do that myself i'm going to go see a physio get my hamstring looked at and get the right treatment because i can like guess and i can do the right things because it's my background but you've got to know for sure sometimes so i'm just going to get my hamstring looked at so this is always kind of my part of call if you think if you've done something and it hurts you're giving it a little bit of a period to rest and it's not really recovering too well you might want to go see someone and get it sorted and get knowing what actually the issue is going to be right guys i will see you at the physio <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, wow. Because the injury is so new and the injury is so acute, we're basically mm, when, when that compete it's and it's right on. Oh. Right. <laughs> Let Jason talk about what it is. A complex <laughs> neuromuscular stimulator. So they've tracked the signals that the brain sends to the muscles. Then what we can do is we can put some pads on, points where the nerves attach to the muscle, and we can attach the unit, and then what happens is it will send the same signal that your brain will send to the muscle. Adam's got an acute tear, low grade tear of his hamstring. Because that only happened yesterday, there's no bruising, but we don't want to risk there being a bleed in there. So heavy soft tissue, even say cupping or scraping or anything in there could potentially open up any cup that's in there a little tear and, and promote more bleeding be a bit more detrimental but what happens is when you get an acute injury like this you get something called inhibition <laughs> so what happens is uh, your brain starts to power things down that's why you might limp after stubbing your toe and then after a short while you can kind of feel your toe out and you start walking again normally well with this it, the brain's powered down the hamstring a bit from damaging itself so what we need to do is try and power that back up again and kind of take over that cute small inhibition so we attach complex and then what happens is it works in a different cycle so it will give Adam a big squeeze in the muscle and then it will give him a little break and then Adam's job is every time there's a big squeeze he contracts his muscle as well joins in and then also uh, we try and jazz that up so as he gets used to it it's giving the same level of stimulus but then <laughs> sorry so uh, it's giving the same level of stimulus but what happens is you're starting to recruit more muscle fibers and therefore you can add a bit more juice to the complex. Uh, but post-op especially, so if you've had surgery, similar process, inhibition, brain thinks you've been stabbed, can't really understand surgery, a few other bits going on, and then what happens is you get a power down of a muscle, so we can use Compex just to fire that up. So again, for anybody who's a, an acute surgery, great, or an acute pull, great. And leading on, this kind of leads on perfectly with what we were kind of saying about mechanical injuries or longer term injuries that have kind of been slowly set into place and things like that. With this being a very acute mechanism of injury based problem, I need to give my body that time to recover but at the same time we need to be thinking about the longer term results of like my body not switching certain muscles off, getting my muscles working so they can get healthier and back to their normal state as quick as possible. But again, finding out the different things about this and finding out that I've got weaknesses in certain areas, this one in particular that's gone has been shown to be weak and that's equal on my other leg as well. So there's a lot of different things to think about when it comes to all of this different stuff. It's like a lot of the time it's very easy to self diagnose nose and if you google it then you're going to be dying or you've got cancer so it's basically you just need to look towards getting some professional advice sometimes and it can really point you in the right direction after doing all of that guys that complex was horrible <laughs> on my hamstring basically just try to break down what jason said and put it in a context for everyone to understand a little bit because i've been doing so much yoga so much stretching and everything that i've been doing around my mobility recently i've got more range my range of motion has improved this new range that i've got if we talk through like what actually happened is completely alien that new range of motion completely alien it doesn't know what to do it has no neuromuscular control basically me doing the heavy load and me doing the split squats in that area is really really like aggravated it pissed it off my body's not knowing what to do bang injury there so if i am doing these range of motion exercises i'm doing the yoga i'm doing a lot of stretching i'm trying to improve my flexibility i need to become a lot more aware of that range of motion and use that range of motion and strengthening it and not just be like bang heavyweight straight into these positions so it's this gradual onset that i haven't really been doing i've just been continuing to do the power building split so putting a lot of weight through my muscles but as i've been doing the flexibility work my body's been like i'm flexible but i don't really know what i'm doing in this position so it's like oh my god what's going on so I need to be doing exercises that I'll be going over. I'll show you guys in the future. I might be a physiotherapist and I might have a degree in this and I might have a fair bit of experience in this as well. But what I'm doing is I'm constantly learning. I'm happy to admit when I don't know things and I have a support network around me like Jason, like my other manager, Nick. I have loads of people in my capacity that are going to help me improve and share with you guys the tips that we need going forward that everyone needs to know. Not just like the BS or oh, this work for me kind of stuff, the stuff that's like scientifically proven the stuff that's gonna work longer term and the stuff that's gonna help you guys stay as mobile as healthy and as functional as absolutely possible so i hope that this video in itself has given you guys a little bit of insight of how different injuries will react to your body we broke it down into the two injuries of injuring yourself with the mechanism of injury and injuring yourself with a long-term onset of injuries there all of this stuff hopefully will be really really helpful for you guys going forward if you have any questions about any of this i've had a lot of information thrown at me so i know i'm throwing a lot of information at you guys please 
please hit me up in the comments below. If you do want to DM me on Instagram, I can do it there. I'm always active. I'm always replying. I'd love to go in more depth and help you guys out if you do have any particular injuries. And I think that's about everything, guys. Please, 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 if you like the video, if you feel like this will help a friend, share it with a friend. We're going to be making loads and loads more videos, trying to put out two videos a week for you guys. So please hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. If you can leave a like rating, that would absolutely be incredible because it always helps me out and helps these videos reach as many more people as possible. And I believe there is one last thing to say. Stay obsessed.